I almost lost all my photos because I wasn't going to pay monthly fees to store them. But thanks to Image, I can now host my own photo and video server at home. I recently cleaned out my storage space because I just got tired of paying hundreds of dollars every month to store literally junk. One of the biggest items in storage were photographs. I have photo albums from when I was a kid, photo albums from my work, photo albums from vacations, just all kinds of random photos. And all told, I probably had at least three large tubs full of bulky photo albums and loose photographs. And so seeing how I'm currently living in a very small space, there was no way that I could have stored all those albums at home. One solution would be to digitize all the photos and then upload them online to any one of the photo storage services like Flickr or Google Photos or the iCloud. But I was trying to avoid paying monthly fees offline, so why would I convert all my photos to digital and then end up paying monthly fees to store them online? Here's where a tool like Image comes in. I can now access all my photos online, upload them using my phone, and not pay any monthly fees. I host and own all my photos. Looking at the Image website at immich.app, under the install section, you can see that using Linux is recommended as the Docker experience on Windows and Mac OS is poor. In the next section, they mention that the install script is experimental, so they recommend using the Docker Compose method. However, because I found a reputable website that helped me with my Jellyfin install, they also have an install script for image, so I will give that a try. So let's hop on over to the website which is https colon slash slash github.io slash community dash scripts slash proxmox ve. So here I'm going to click on going to the website and then I will click on the view script button. Then you can see that there are ready-made scripts for things related to proxmox and virtualization, operating systems, and all kinds of other subjects but we're interested in media and streaming. So let's click into there. And as you can see, there are tons of helper scripts for things like image, Jellyfin, Plex, and more. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on image and we see the simple instruction of one command line. I like simple. The instructions say that to create a new Proxmox image LXE, type the command in the Proxmox VE shell. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my Proxmox storage environment, and then I launch a shell for my server, and then type the line to grab the install script and then run it. So basically it runs a bash shell, which in turn does a curl to this particular address, which is the uh, image install shell script. If you don't want to run just any random script off the internet, which is probably a smart idea, you can download and then read the helper script first to make sure it doesn't contain anything fishy. All right, so once we got this thing launched, it's gonna ask if you want to use default settings. You can go ahead and select the third option, which is advanced. I don't wanna use the defaults because I want to show you what the script is actually doing. The default is basically just an automated thing that just speeds through until the very, very end. But you know, you can certainly use the default to make things easier. All right, we get a tip on using the space bar to make the selections. So we're gonna click enter to say okay. And we are asked to choose the container type. The unprivileged container is fine as I don't think this container needs to do anything that requires higher rights. Next, we are asked to choose the root password. So go ahead and type in what you want. And then we need to type it in again to ensure you type the same thing twice. Next comes the container ID. What I usually do is use the number that matches the IP number for my LXC. So in this case, I'm just gonna call it 209 because that's the next available IP number for me. The host name of image-ct is what I'm gonna use to denote that it's a container as opposed to a virtual machine. For disk size, the default size of 20 gigs is fine because I'm gonna be using a NAS later to store the photos, not just the 20 gigs on the server. But if you are actually just gonna use uh, this particular server, then you probably want to have a bigger storage space. All right, so the default of four CPU cores is fine with me. The default of 
4096 RAM is also fine. Next, I'm going to select the default bridge of VMBR0 for networking. And for the IP address, I'm going to change from the default DHCP to a static IP. Is it really necessary to, to use a static IP? No, but I just want to know what the IP is every time. So I'm going to use the IP that's static. And it's going to be 192.168.1.209. And I'm going to add the mask of slash 24 for my network. Your network may be different, so use the mask and IP number for your own network. For the gateway IP, I'm going to set it to my network gateway, which is 192.168.1.1. Again, yours may be different. For IPv6, I'm going to leave it as the default of auto. Next thing is asking about the APT cacher IP. And since I don't have a caching proxy, I'm going to leave this blank. Then we get asked about the MTU size. And since I don't know what a better one might be, I'm just going to use the default value. And next thing is going to look for the DNS search domain. I'm going to leave that as the default. But then for the next question of DNS server IP, I'm actually going to use my own local DNS uh, server, which has the IP of 192.168.1.207. You may or may not be running your own DNS on your own network, so choose the appropriate IP number. For the MAC address, I'm going to use the default because I don't need to customize my MAC address. And for VLAN selection, I'm going to leave it blank because I don't have a VLAN set up for simplicity for this case. And for the advanced tags, I'm going to leave the default of community scripts and then photos. Uh, so basically, this is going to result with the LXE being marked with these tags in Proxmox. Uh, sometimes it's helpful if you have a whole bunch of these things running. For the SSH key, I'm going to leave it empty for now and set that up later. The next thing is uh, whether we want to enable root SSH access. I'm going to leave the default as a no. And then for enabling few support, I'm also going to leave the default of no. All right, next thing is enable verbose mode. I'm going to change this to a yes because I want to see the progress of the install, even though I will probably not understand all the gibberish that comes across the screen. I just want to see some movement so I know it's not stuck somewhere. And finally, it is asking whether we are ready to create the image LXC. And so if you are ready, go ahead and hit yes. All right, so pretty much we figured out immediately that that was a tease because there's one more question to see if you want to write the selections to the config file. I would say yes, but I don't know what to do with that config file, so I'm just going to take the uh, default of no. All right, so off it goes. And you can see all of the info that we filled in earlier from the container ID to the host name, the uh, size of the machine, the IP numbers, etc. And then it's going to continue with the install. And then at some point, you're going to get another question. Uh, it's going to ask you whether you want to automatically mount all the available VA API devices. And that's meant for the GPUs. But I don't have any GPUs for this LXC, so I'm going to say no. And then so this is going to run for a while until the next question. It is going to ask you whether you want to install OpenVINO dependencies for Intel Hardware Accelerated Machine Learning. I'm going to say no, as I don't have enough RAM to give the LXC uh, what it needs. You know, which is fine. It's just going to take a lot longer if I have a lot of photos that it has to crank through. And so I'm just going to let this thing run in real time. It took about 20 minutes on my system. And obviously yours will be different depending on what kind of hardware you're running it on. And I'm going to speed this thing up to the very end. So you can tell that it's done when you see the command prompt back. And you will also see the line that tells you how to access the image server. Note that you need to enter the IP as well as the port number of 2283. Okay, now that the new image server has been created, let's go ahead and configure the server. So once again, we're going to 
uh, open up a browser window and type in the URL earlier, which is 192.168.1.209 colon 2283. And you will be shown the welcome page for image. The first thing you will need to do is uh, the admin registration. You're going to have to provide an admin email, password, and then a name. I don't know if you need to give it a real email. I just used admin at madeup.com and it seems to be fine. Um, so uh, I'm going to have to make my own password and then I'm going to give it the name of image admin. And then once we get logged in, we get to set up the common settings. So it's going to ask whether you want a light or dark theme. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick light. And then it's going to ask for a language choice. So English is my language of choice. I'm going to click next. And then the server privacy is next. And we get to pick whether you want to use the external service for maps and version check. And I will leave both of those on. For user privacy, I'm going to leave the default off for uh, Google Cast. And for storage template, I don't know any better at this point. So again, I'm going to leave the default setting to off. Now that the server is up and running, let's upload some pictures and start using image. And adding photos from a computer is pretty simple. You can just drag and drop. Uh, so I'm going to have my uh, finder window open here on my Mac. And then you know, where my photos are, I'm just going to select them all and then just drag them onto the web page. And you can see that they start getting populated into the photo lineup. And you can also see that they are sorted by date, right, in the general photos menu. So once I see all my photos here, you can also create albums to show different subjects. And we can go ahead and click on albums over here. So we'll go ahead and add an album and we're going to name it friends. And you can select the photos by clicking on on individual ones or you can click on the first one and then hold down the shift key and click on the last one you want to select or if you want to select photos not in sequence you can hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on a PC and just click on non-sequential photos and if you can see the check mark those are the ones that it's going to add so let's go ahead and finish that one let's create a new album called doggy playgroup and then I'm going to select my doggy pictures, put those in there. And then I'm also going to create an album named Weddings and then add the wedding photo. So adding photos and creating albums, it's pretty simple and intuitive. You can also upload and access your photos from your phone or tablet. From the store that pertains to your phone, you can download the image app. For me, I'm using my iPhone to download the app from the Apple App Store. So once the app is installed, I will launch it and log in to my account. But I keep on getting errors that I don't really understand. So I search for an answer and turns out that before an iOS app will work, you will need to enable the local networks in the settings. So once I go into settings for this particular app and then enable local networks. Now, if I go back to the app, it can be used on the local network and I can see the photos and I can use the map feature, explore the, uh, the people and locations and share albums and so forth. From the app, we can select individual photos to back up, which is basically uploading to the server, or we can select the entire range group. So from the computer's view, we can see the photo library updated after we backed up the photos from the phone. And so if we look at the features on the left-hand menu here, we can look at Explore, which automatically recognizes faces in the photos. And then they group them together for easy access. So if I click on Aquafina, here's all the pictures that she was recognized in. And similarly, if I click on Jason, uh, there's his pictures are all in my library. And we can see that it also recognizes the GPS coordinates and the XF data for the photos. Um, so if I click on the location, here are the photos that have this 
uh, spot as the GPS. The next feature is the map, where the photos with GPS information are placed onto a map. So it looks like I got three photos in the middle of the Pacific. And if we zoom in, we can see that the photos have GPS coordinates from the big island of Hawaii. And then panning over, we can see that we got two photos in the Los Angeles region. We got about five photos in the New York region. We got the wedding picture out of Gibraltar. And then various food pictures from the two locations here in the Greek Isles. So, setting up your own photo server is pretty easy with Image. You can either use the script that I showed you, or go through manually to set up the Image server and Postgres database server. And the instructions are pretty clear on the websites. Either way, you now have control of your own photos and don't have to worry about paying a monthly fee for an outside service provider. You also don't have to worry about them going through your photos. For another video that I know you will enjoy, watch this video here. Leave a comment below about your experience with home media servers. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.